greetings citizens of the world, in the recent years, it's becoming more and more obvious that our societies are being ruled by a secret power, by a network of powerful individuals, who are pulling the strings hidden behind the political arena, and are creating wars, economic crisis, poverty, terrorism and coups, in order to impoverish everyone else and keep themselves at the top of the pyramid of power. This elites, are formed by the banking families, who have been controlling the most important private and central banks for generations, by the monarchies from Europe and Gulf countries, by the black nobility, who are the descendants of Roman aristocratic families, by the Vatican, who has amassed vast amounts of wealth throughout the last centuries, and by families and businessmen, who have become extremely rich and influential, like Soros, Bill Gates, the Bush family, etc. All these people, not only are in close contact through secret societies, like the Round Table, Skull and Bones, the Bilderberg Meeting, Committee of 300, etc. But they also have been intermarrying with each other for generations, they are all interconnected, and they're like a big family, it's well known, that they're Warburg, the Sif, the Rothschild, the Rockefeller, etc. have been intermarrying with each other for many generations now, besides, they are obsessed with bloodlines, and eugenics, they think they are intellectually superior to the rest of us, and they don't want to interbreed with those who are part of the masses. These globalist elites are so rich because they own, they direct, or they are stockholders of many of the biggest corporations and banks, they also own an important part of the land and the resources of the earth, and if they can control the rest of us, it's because they place themselves, or their agents, in key positions of important institutions of our societies, like the governments, banks, intelligence agencies, etc. So in this video, I will briefly show some of the tools used by this network of psychopathic and extremely rich individuals, to destroy the sovereignty of the nations, and enslave all of us. You were both in Skull and Bone, the secret society. It's so secret we can't talk about what it. What does that mean for America? The conspiracy theorists are going to go I'm on. I'm sure they are. I don't know. I haven't seen the web. Number 322. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first of all, he's not the nominee. And, uh, but, uh, look, I look for. Are you prepared to lose? No, I'm not going to lose. You both were members of Skull and Bones, a secret society at Yale. What does that tell us? Uh, not much, because it's a secret. <laughs> Is there a secret handshake? Is there a secret code? I wish there were something secret I could manifest. 322? A secret number? Uh, there are all kinds of secrets, Tim. The most important institution the elites use to enslave humanity are the central banks. These institutions are being used as a weapon to create economic crisis. They do that through controlling the monetary policies. They create periods of expansion where they give cheap credit to everyone, and then, they suddenly cut the money supply, provoking economic slumps and bankruptcies, that impoverish the people and the governments, which in turn enrich the big banks, owned by the elites, who are the ones that gobble up the assets of the bankrupted governments, businesses and little banks. It's very frank, we've got this report here that the Fed might consider rolling over their purchases, uh, how are investors to read that? Well, investors should have listened to me already six months ago when I wrote that the Fed would continue to monetize, and this is my view, they will never let up, they will print and print and print until the final crisis wipes out the entire system. Other important organizations controlled by members of the elites and used to enslave all of us, are the intelligence agencies, like the CIA or MI6. These institutions are the enemy number one of democracies, since they invest most of their budgets in overthrowing governments all over the world. It's well documented that in the last 70 years, the Anglo-American Empire have covertly overthrown at least 90 democratically elected governments all over the world. Whenever a government who wants to redistribute wealth appear, and raise taxes to the rich, or nationalize some companies, or regulates the financial system, then the secret services start their covert operations to destabilize governments and overthrow them. Some common techniques the intelligence agencies use to achieve that are, propaganda, lies, 
assassinations, false accusations, false flag attacks, funding terrorism and demonstrations, impose sanctions and embargoes, lower oil prices, etc. So now, let's see the long list of coups orchestrated by the United States government since the Second World War. Remember that the US government policies are controlled by the elites, who have placed their individuals in key positions of the government, the asterisk indicates successful ouster of a government. Other institutions the elites used to overthrow governments are the non-governmental organizations, like the National Endowment Democracy, the United States Agency for International Development, or the Open Society funded by George Soros. These institutions are being used to fund political parties all over the world, which promote the interest of the New World Order elites. Therefore, whenever in a country a populist party appears, this foundations and non-governmental organizations will start funding generously the political campaign of opposition parties to prevent that populist politicians rise to power. It's no longer a secret that some of the U.S. government's aid programs have a dual purpose. The U.S. Agency for International Development, USAID, known for overseeing billions of dollars in U.S. humanitarian aid, was dispatching Venezuelan, Costa Rican and Peruvian young people to Cuba hoping to provoke a revolution there. Young Latinos often posed as tourists. They traveled across the country and recruited people whom they believed they could turn into political activists. Once the intelligence agencies have managed to overthrow democratic governments, the elites will replace them by psychopathic and corrupt politicians, who will be willing to allow the foreign corporations, owned by the elites, to loot their countries, and impoverish their citizens. These dictators are unwanted and hated by the population, but they can hold on to power for many years, because they receive economical, diplomatic, and military support from our governments and the globalist elites. For example, the Anglo-American Empire have been supporting the despotic monarchies of Gulf countries for at least a century, so next time you criticize Islamic terrorists, Remember that it's been your government in first place who is giving support to these dictators that fund terrorism with the oil money. In the past, but in the past 60 years, the US government has attempted to overthrow dozens of democratically elected governments, sometimes successfully and sometimes not. They have also grossly interfered in dozens of democratic elections all over the world. It would be difficult to name a brutal dictatorship of the second half of the 20th century which was not supported by U.S. foreign policy. Not just supported, but put into power and kept in power against the wishes of their own people. Another, banking institutions the elites use to impoverish all of us and destroy the sovereignty of the countries are the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund. These banks give loans to countries who are in desperate need of credit, but in exchange they force these countries to do structural reforms, like privatization, devaluation of currency, removal of tariff barriers, elimination of government subsidies, reduce social expenditures, etc. All these measures destroy the economies of the countries, and allows foreign corporations, owned by the New World Order elites to invade their markets and loot their resources. And remember, if the countries do not accept the conditionalities imposed by the World Bank or IMF, their politicians will simply be bribed, killed or overthrown by our intelligence agencies. <laughs> Another method the elites use to destroy democracies, is through forcing or persuading countries to sign free trade deals, that will end up with the sovereignty of these nations with the stroke of a pen. Since these trade deals come with a clause that allow corporations and foreign investors to sue governments if they approve laws or regulations that affect the corporation earnings. So now my question is, where is the democracy if corporations can sue a government?
to passing regulations that protect human rights and the environment. And remember, if a country don't want to join this free trade deals, our intelligence agencies will surely bribe or overthrow its governments. Finally, if this elites cannot overthrow a government through the conventional techniques of sanctions, embargoes, propaganda, etc., they will start a war. About 10 days after 9-11, I went through the Pentagon and I saw Secretary Rumsfeld and, and Deputy Secretary Wolfowitz. I went downstairs just to say hello to some of the people on the joint staff who had used, used to work for me. And one of the generals called me in. He said, sir, you got to come in. You got to come in and talk to me a second. I said, well, you're too busy. He said, no, no. He says, we've made the decision. We're going to war with Iraq. This was on or about the 20th of September. I said, we're going to war with Iraq. Why? He said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, I guess they don't know what else to do. So uh, I said, well, did they find some information collect connecting Saddam to Al-Qaeda? He said, no, no. He says, there's nothing new that way. They've just made the decision to go to war with Iraq. He said, I guess it's like we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we've got a good military and we can take down governments. And um, he said, I guess if if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem has to look like a nail. So I came back to see him a few weeks later, and by that time we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. Once the elites have taken the decision behind closed doors to create a war, they will mainly use three methods to spark a conflict and confront the nations with each other. 1. Orchestrate false flag terror attacks against its own citizens, like the 9-11, or the Gulf of Tonkin incident, in Vietnam. Other things that are done to spark wars is to facilitate attacks from enemy countries. For example, during First World War, the United States sent the Lusitania full of passengers and weapons. In German waters, or it's well documented by now, that US government had been warned, and had deciphered a message that gave the US previous knowledge of the attack on Pearl Harbor. However, US intelligence decided not to warn Pearl Harbor about the oncoming attack, so that it could be used as a pretext to persuade the masses to join the World War II. Another thing the intelligence agencies, controlled by the elites, do to justify wars, is feed the media outlets and the news agencies, with lies, propaganda, false accusations, etc. to instill hatred on the minds of the citizens towards other nations, so that the elites can gain their support in waging imperialistic wars. Besides, bear in mind that the media corporations are owned by billionaires, who are members or relatives of this same globalist elites that own the banks and the big corporations. Finally, the most common tool used to spark imperialistic wars. It's to create terrorism. Modern history shows us that terrorists are funded, armed and promoted by the elites and their intelligence agencies mainly in order to achieve two goals. 1. To start civil wars that destabilize countries and undesired governments. 2. To create conflicts that can be used as a pretext to military intervene in foreign countries and start an imperialistic war. A good example of that is Kosovo, Syria or Libya. We also have a history of kind of moving in and out of Pakistan. I mean, let's remember here, the people we are fighting today, we funded 20 years ago. So as we have briefly seen dear sisters and brothers, there is a well interconnected network of powerful individuals, who through controlling the banks, the intelligence agencies, corporations and other financial institutions, have managed to enslave all of us. This elites are the ones who cause the third world poverty, they create wars, they fund terrorism, and they brainwash the masses. Humanity is being enslaved. So please dear sisters and brothers, start opening your eyes, and start becoming aware of the true power of this elites, and how they manipulate the world events. I hope this video have helped the viewer to be a little bit more awakened. We are anonymous, and we are fighting for a better world. We do not forgive, and we do not forget. So, expect us. <laughs>